we'll go ahead with a Bible lesson here in 2 Timothy, and we're up to part 4. We'll start by reading uh, the first verse in chapter 3, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. And uh, before we, we read, we, we want to go ahead, uh, I'm thinking of two things at once here. We're going to go ahead through, oh, six, at least six of the verses. But um, it starts out with our Apostle of the Gentiles, Paul, writing to Timothy. And throughout this epistle, there is this thread of how to propagate the gospel of the grace of God, how to pass it on to the next generation, how, how to maintain its growth. And uh, we're here 2,000 years later, so it worked. And it will work as we apply it. So, Second uh, Timothy 3, verse 1, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, Excuse me just a minute here. Paul is preparing followers for the last days of the body of Christ on earth. And there, there is a different last days for the body of Christ than the last days for Israel. They're different, just like their programs are different. Since Israel fell, Israel's last days come later, after the last days of the body of Christ. He is intending to, uh, for the body of Christ to grow and extend God's offer of salvation. But Paul wrote that in the last days of the body of Christ, instead of growing, men shall be lovers, this is verse 2, lovers of their own selves, covetous, proud, uh, boasters, proud. Man's pride is part of our flesh. Man's pride gets in the way of God's will. When I say pride, I'm talking about uh, I will do this, I can do it myself, it's up to me, and, and I did it just right. I don't need anybody's help, that kind of pride. Pride gets in the way of people receiving salvation. Uh, the salvation that God has lovingly and sacrificially made available to them. It's uh, available, but it's not automatically applied. We must receive it. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, Verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, heady high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Denying the power thereof. So, um, there are, <laughs> I'm sure you're aware there are people that come in here often, and that's first in their mind, is, is the uh, tragedy going on in the world today, politics, murders, you know, gu guns and stuff. Uh, but Paul tells us what to do. He says, from such turn away. From such turn away. Uh, and that's quite a list. Paul was inspired of God to write and to use these very words and to write them down. So these things must have already been happening at that time also. Those things have been happening since then, and, and so any time since then could have been the last days. But they're not the last days until 
they lead to our being caught up to forever be with the Lord. 2 Timothy 3, 6 For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly women, lead captive silly women laden with sins. And Paul's not insulting women here. <laughs> not all women are silly. Uh, but Paul was inspired to write that all the women that are led captive with sins are silly. Uh, look at these three verses, first and second, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. I believe they're relevant here, these verses. Uh, verse 19, to wit or to know that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Well, God was no longer just sending reconciliation to Israel alone anymore as, as a, dispens a dispensation of the gospel of Christ. Uh, that was the mystery of Christ revealed to Paul that the gospel of salvation is no longer sent only to the Israel, to the Jews and the Greeks. Paul's gospel of salvation began to be sent to the entire world to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now then, in other words, because God hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. In other words, as if this is Christ talking to you, be ye reconciled to God. God made reconciliation to us, but we need to receive that and not put up a blockade there by saying, I don't want that gift. We need to receive and rest in that reconciliation. God has reconciled us to him, but we need to receive that gift of reconciliation. Let's go to the next verse, uh, verse 21. Be ye reconciled to God, for God hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, he knew no sin, in other words, Christ, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Second Timothy 3, 6, For of this sort are they which creep into houses. What were those houses that Paul talks about? Consider these verses about houses at that time in Paul's day. Romans 16, verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Eponetus. Eponetus. Uh, ouch. Uh, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. There's the house again. Colossians 4.15 Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church which is in his house. Philemon 1.2 to, to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. So Paul might be warning that there will be those sitting there in your churches and Bible study groups who soon will be teaching other things not in the Bible. Second Timothy 3, 6, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. 
verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 8, now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Right here within the body of Christ, sitting in seats around us, next to us, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Second Timothy 3, 9. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly, their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as theirs was also, talking about Janus and Jambres still, um, 2 Timothy 3.10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, uh, and that applies through here, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith. Thou hast fully known my long-suffering, my charity, my patience. Verse 11, And my persecutions and afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch, and Iconium, and at Lystra. That's the three cities around where he was uh, stoned to death. What persecutions I endured, he says, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. And on, on the website there, followchristpattern.com, uh, there's still the lesson about Five times delivered. Five times delivered. It's on page six of the top yellow menu. And the Lord delivered Paul five times. And Acts 26, six, verses 16 to 17, identifies why. It says that people, the people and the Gentiles from whom Paul was delivered are the people and the Gentiles to whom Christ had sent Paul in that dispensation of the gospel of Christ. You rarely hear that mentioned. Uh, there was a dispensation in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 that came before the dispensation of the grace of God. It had the same, uh, same gospel message, same saving message, and it was just uh, that the Lord introduced it first to the Jews and those Gentiles worshiping with the Jews and through Israel's doctrine. But that was Gentiles. The, the, you know, it's the term the Gentiles is used. It was the Gentiles to whom Christ was sending Paul at that time to those Jews and Greeks in the synagogues. Let's go on to uh, verse 12. This is 2 Timothy 3.12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. If you'll live godly in Christ Jesus, then you shall suffer persecution too. But, you know, compare these 80 years on earth with the, the <laughs> 80 billions of years, whatever you however you think of eternity without an end. Second Timothy 3.13, But evil men and seducers, that's back here on earth, uh, shall wor wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Second Timothy 3.14, But continue thou in the things, here's the remedy, in the things which thou hast learned, and been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who did Timothy learn his doctrine from? He's writing to him. Paul writing to Timothy. Timothy learned those things from the Old Testament scriptures that his mother and his grandmother taught him. Look at uh, verse 15 in Second Timothy 3. And that from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. What did the holy scriptures in the Old Testament do for them? They made them wise, made them wise unto something. It doesn't say that the Old Testament scriptures saved them. 
in the in that dispensation in in this current dispensation we are saved by believing the gospel revealed only to Paul that Christ died for our sins he was buried and raised again the third day but from a child Timothy had known the holy scriptures which were able to make thee wise wise to what well it says wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus when they hear it they can believe it well, what about the scripture uh, all scripture verse 16 all scripture is given and that's a fact all scripture is given and it's verified by Colossians 1 25 wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God there it is it's a specific statement right there in Scripture itself God dispensed something from him to Paul for you and me to fulfill the Word of God to fill it up fill up the Word of God the writing of the Word of God all Scripture is given and it's given by inspiration of God and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril, nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul Romans 10 17 when they hear it they can believe it so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God what if you hear the Word of God and you reject it how do we know that the Bible is legitimate and the Word of God first Corinthians 14 37 if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord they're not as some people say second grade scriptures second uh, lower class you know uh, if there's a conflict believe the other ones believe Matthew Mark Luke and John instead of Paul no no that's our scripture for today we're not Israel Israel was who, to whom Christ sent Matthew Mark well not Mark <laughs> Matthew John, James, Thaddeus, uh, Philip, all of those, Thomas, the 12 apostles were apostles to Israel, not to us. Our information and our doctrine is in Paul's 13 epistles, Romans through Philemon. So Paul was uniquely equipped to bring to us the newly received word of God. We don't get the Word of God newly revealed to us today. We get it by reading or hearing what Paul taught in Romans through Philemon. Second Timothy one, uh, three fifteen sixteen. I'll get it right. Second Timothy three sixteen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Yes, believers, Acts is not excluded. <laughs> uh, it's, it's there. It's not exclu excluded from being profitable. And it says for doctrine it's profitable. When it's kept in context and when it's rightly divided and considering to whom it's about and, and uh, which people group uh, each part of it was written to. Acts is profitable for doctrine. Don't abuse it by failing to use it or by misapplying it. We're talking about the doctrine in Acts and in the Acts epistles. A large part of those epistles are just as applicable to the body of Christ today as Paul's post-Acts epistles are. The difference 
is that there is some additional information in Acts and in the Acts period epistles that only applied to those Jews and Greeks to whom Paul was sent to dispense the gospel of Christ at that time. That people group of the, the Jews and the Greeks does not exist anymore. We don't have to worry about if we should wear a head covering or not wear a head covering. Uh, what about uh, uh, the way we behave in front of Jews and Greeks? Um, they're trying to get saved into the body of Christ before the end of that dispensation of the gospel of Christ. That was specially tailored, geared to them. But that's over. Today, that's not our concern. Things like food offered to idols and all those ordinances, before the middle wall of partition was broken down, they were all in effect. After the middle wall was broken down, all those things do not concern us. And we'll close with these verses again. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and he is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. The goal is to perfect godly men and the means is to furnish the man of God through and through by the word of God. Amen. All right. Any comments or uh, corrections, additions?